Hi guys, welcome to another video from Overbyte Gaming, and today we're doing a early access review. Uh, so bear in mind this isn't the finished article, it's just the early access version, and it's a Strox Aperium. Uh, now this is a game very, very similar to EVE if it was offline. It's single player only, there are apparently maybe plans for co-op being introduced later on, uh, although it hasn't been confirmed. The game itself is being made primarily by one guy, a fellow by the name of Jace Masula. And for one guy's work, it's pretty incredible. Um, I'm having a really good time with it. I'm afraid I'm primarily a trader and miner, so uh, yeah. Uh, the footage isn't going to be particularly exciting, I'm afraid. It's just me going around the place. It has been in early access since March 2019, but I've only recently come across it uh, when reading an EVE online update and recommended this in there. And so I gave it a try, because it sounds like good news. Uh, being able to play an EVE-like game and not having to give CCP my money, because I'm not particularly enamoured of them as a company, after the whole Monocle debacle, and the fact that uh, the one time I've contacted their technical support, I got a very sarcastic and unprofessional response. Um, so, yeah, not particularly a fan of them. Plus, they dropped the World of Darkness thing they were working on, which I was looking forward to. So, screw those guys. Uh, which is a shame, because if you've seen my previous video about my top play games, EVE Online is right up there. Uh, so, Astrox Imperium, you play a pilot that is cracked out of a cryopod and set upon your merry way in the galaxy, and it has a lot of fully fleshed out options that you see in EVE. It's not quite as polished in terms of the UI and some of the gameplay features as EVE, uh, but it is bloody close, and in fact it does some things slightly better than EVE, for instance, uh, you can activate your modules while out of range, and when you get into range they will just come on, already having charged. Whereas with EVE it just tells you you're out of range, you need to wait until you're actually in range to do it. Uh, which is a nice touch. You know, stuff like that. Uh, graphically, it's not bad at all for what it is. I mean, when you consider it's made by one guy and you're paying like £11.29, I think. I'll just double check for you guys. £11.39, an extra 10 pence, so uh, if you feel that's broken broken your interest in the game, you probably weren't that interested in the first place. <laughs> uh, but it's mouse driven, uh, you can look around your ship, uh, it does have, if you get zoomed too far in, the, it has like depth of the field where the backgrounds go blurry but the ship stays in focus. Uh, you can also do it from first person, uh, which is nice when, when you're already targeting stuff because the way it targets is slightly different when you come into uh, I want to say like a sector but it's not really a sector it's more like a planet even though it's referred to as a system uh, but it is sort of smaller scale in that regard there's over like 50 of them so there's plenty of traveling about you can do uh, but the the actual sort of sectors themselves are a lot smaller uh, so you come in and you have nothing on your scanners at all. So what you need to do is you need to look around and you see, okay, I know those are the Stargate icons, I know those are facility icons, and these are ship icons, and these are asteroids and stuff. Uh, so you go through, you scan the, the ships, not the ships, you scan the facilities and the, the, the warp gates, and then your ship remembers it, and you can select which ones you want or unselect them. In fact, you can choose to make your ship forget them and have to rescan next time you come through, which I was doing all the time because I didn't actually realize how the scanning worked properly. Because it still it stays on your scanning list, and I'm assuming, like, oh, well, I, well, I can target four, so I, I, I don't want those on there, so I got rid of them. No, I, they actually they have, like, a single line of text when they're remembered, and they expand to show you the icon when they're actually selected. So it actually does work really well, and I kind of like that. I kind of like that whole manually having to scan your surroundings uh, to figure out what's going on. It's really well done. Another nice thing that happens is any system you've gone to but you haven't gone through the Stargates to, in your in your galaxy map you just hover over the system and it shows you the systems it connects to. Uh, so that's really nice as well. It's a little bit tricky if you want to go one system further away because obviously you don't know where it is but I'm sure you could Google it and it's never been an issue for me yet. 
There is obviously combat in the game. I uh, haven't really done much of it outside of the training, because as I say, miner and uh, trader. So, yeah, I, I tend to, to shy away from combat. I, I, I might do a second character. It does allow you to do multiple characters uh, and uh, go the more combative route and see how I like that. But I'm just having a lot of time trading and mining. I've, I, I saved up money and bought a new ship that has a lot more cargo capacity and two more mounts for active modules. In this you have active and passive modules. So your active ones are stuff like guns or your miners or scanners, anything that you really need to sort of toggle on and off. And then you have passive ones which gives you boosts uh, such as uh, expanded cargo room, uh, scanning times sort of being brought down, things like that. You have a load of skills. Not every school is accessible at every station. There's a university at each station and they all do uh, a, a different sort of selection of skills that are relevant to the facility that you're at. Uh, so you, you buy them there, you spend skill points, you get skill points by doing missions, just generally being in space, or by leveling up. And you spend skill points and a little bit of cash as well, and then it takes a certain amount of time to do, like in EVE, uh, but the, the times are generally fairly short until you get to the sort of top ends of the skilling trees because each one has about 10 different levels associated with it. Uh, and you do learn faster while docked, but you, you will continue to learn while you're out in space as well. I guess you've got like, it's, it's sort of assuming when you're docked you're sat in front of a terminal working on it obsessively and when you're in space you've got like a book in your hand or something like that. Uh, but that's, that's a nice little... It's a nice little catch to it. I like that. You can train more than one skill at a time. It will just add it on to the end of your skills. So, cool. The, the starter skills normally take just a few minutes. Uh, but they do obviously ramp up as you go further up the queue. The life support system is really very interesting. And something I've not seen before in a space game. So, you have life support. You've got uh, shields and armor. You don't have internal structure on this. You have life support. And what happens is, uh, when your shields and armor are depleted, that's it, boom, you're gone, you're dead. Your ship blows up, bang. Hasn't happened to me, so can't really speak too much of it, because I've run away from combat. <laughs> but where your life support comes in, if you get a little bit damaged, your life support compensates for the damage to your armor. So it's almost like saying, okay, I've got a whole breach, but my life support's handling it. And you can have little plugins for your life support, like waste recycling and... Uh, food items and stuff that makes your life support stronger so it would be able to keep you alive for longer while you're out in the big black and get your ass to a station to repair your ship. Uh, so that that's that's pretty nicely done. Uh, so far I've not had any sort of power limitations. Uh, I upgraded my miners when I upgraded my ship and you can see they take a little bit off of my power bar but not too much. I've certainly not run into a a case where I'm completely out and it feels like um, my, it fills my cargo hold because I'm not in a terribly terribly big ship um, it fills my cargo quite quickly anyway so I don't think even if I sort of put replace my two original miners with the new power with two more of the new powerful ones that it would be an energy problem I imagine when you get into significantly bigger ships like there are carriers there are frigates stuff like that with a lot of turrets on them um, that you will be able to you know really drain your battery so to speak and have to like put in excessive amounts of boosting to it <coughs> excuse me one thing I do like is the turrets on your ship do have arcs so I was just like okay well I've got four four mining beams let's just target four asteroids of the same ore and we'll just get done in a flash so I did that. Unfortunately, it was only firing at two. I was like, what's going on? And I realized none of my turrets could see the other two. Uh, whereas on Eve, you have matched turrets. So basically, whatever turret you put on will pop up as a pair. One on one side of the ship, one on the other side of the ship. So it will always be able to fire. Uh, that, that's possibly better from a gameplay standpoint. But I, I kind of like the realism of that you know the limited arcs only having one turret when you buy one turret that sort of thing so that's pretty cool I am absolutely made up with this game because I've played it for over 20 hours now and 
I, I am enjoying the hell out of it. I'm really wanting to get in some of those bigger ships. Obviously, you have to learn the skills to do that, and you, you have to learn the sort of previous ship skills, so you can't just learn a carrier, for instance. You have to work your way up to the carrier. Uh, but it doesn't seem like you have to do anything but the initial level to open up the next skill. Uh, some of the ships will have sort of further skilling requirements in them because they're obviously more advanced, more difficult to fly, <coughs> which is fine. I'd really like to see the co-op mode come in. Uh, I recommended it to uh, my friend Bungle, who is a big EVE Online player. And outside of him being able to un un unable to work out how to keep it going in the background because he runs a multiple monitor display and wants it to be able to go while he does something else. Uh, because it's a very good sort of casually played game where you can like, <coughs> much like Eve is, you, you could have a, a cargo mission where you need to do seven jumps and, you know, it doesn't take an awful amount of time, but it's certainly like a good 10 minutes or so, so you can like play with your phone, you know, do something else, go make a cup of coffee while it's doing that, assuming you trust the bad guys not to kill you. Because I've avoided combat. Everybody likes me. Yeah, you will get occasionally get a warning when raiders come into the system who uh, are represented by <coughs> red circles and sort of red squares inside them. Uh, the other ships are represented by different coloured um, squares inside of a blue circle, um, and their colours match sort of their faction. So you have like law. You have um, obviously pirates. Stuff like that. I mean, I do jobs for everybody. Nobody hates me. I'm all good. <laughs> so, like, the ships, generally speaking, aren't really an issue. Uh, when you start the game, you will be taken through several training missions. I think there's maybe... <coughs> there's maybe, like, half a dozen, maybe a few more. Just so you, it teaches you the systems. Um, it is a lot of reading. It's I don't think it's voice, but I could be wrong. It's a while ago since I did it. So it does clue you know a lot of the systems, but some of the nuance isn't quite there. Like I said before, the targeting system, I was like dropping them off after I'd scanned them, not realizing that it was just already scanned and remembered and I could just click on what I wanted to target, which, yeah, I'm stupid. But, I mean, as a game that costs, you know, less than £11.50, and the fact it's being done by one guy. I mean, I cannot extol the virtues of this game enough. I am having a blast with it. It's completely up my alley. I, I love, love space games, especially ones where I have my own head. Uh, stuff like X4, uh, Elite Dangerous. I always want to call it Frontier, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. Elite Dangerous until they brought out the stupid use of space legs anyway. <laughs> uh, but as I said, it is in early access. It is being done by one guy, and it is, you know, £11.39. Don't go in expecting a AAA experience. It is great for what it is. Um, and the guy doing it has, he's got a, on, straight on the store page a list of stuff he's implementing, and he's just updated that and put added every time he puts one of those promises in. And I think all he's got left to really do is sort of the end stage storylines for the various factions. Um, I haven't really delved into the to many of the storylines yet because I'm not sure where to do it. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I'm just doing missions from the mission board. I mean, I'm occasionally doing um, going out and doing some mining, but I'm you make generally speaking you make a lot more on missions unless you go out and get some like real real sort of high level ores which are generally found in lower security systems so you run more of a risk of running afoul of raiders and stuff uh, you can <coughs> one nice thing it does have over Eve is you can manually fly as well if you'd like to uh, <coughs> it seems to operate on uh, sort of a a faux 3d system and the fact that you can go left and right and forward and back but there's no there's there's no uh, x up and down axis is that x or y <laughs> i'm gonna say y <laughs> uh, i don't know whether that's me just being a toolbox and not working out how to do it or whether maybe you can do it via mouse which is possible uh but uh yeah i mean it's 
I basically use that for when I just want to like just nudge myself a little bit like if I'm trying to target something and the, the, the warp gate I've just come through is in the way and every time you click on the warp gate because you've got the warp gate selected it tries to go back through the warp gate and because you're right next to it it doesn't really give you a chance to cancel it so you end up going back and forth and some warp gates cost money to go through so if, you <laughs> if you're not careful you could end up having to pay like three times just to go through a warp gate but again that's probably just me being an idiot but it, it has happened to me a couple of times well, the, the paying one is having to be a lot more than a couple of times. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. It's a lovely game. Um, I'd like to see more of the storyline, but I'm not real sure where to go. Mind you, I haven't really made any heroic efforts to find out. I've just been puttering about, you know, earning money and upgrading my ship and getting another ship. And now I'm upgrading that. And then I will eventually want to get something... To, a lot bigger and meaner and buffer and a bit of a badass ship which I'm then gonna fill with cargo and mining lasers <laughs> uh, you will notice that uh, a lot of the ships are classified as like frigate cruiser but they will also have like a subheading uh, like recon or um, salvaging stuff like that and the different types of those will have various different benefits to the sort of field it's intended to do, like recon with better scanner ranges, stuff like that, salvaging with better usage of salvagers for yields, things like that. So even though <clears throat> you've got yourself your badass cruiser, you might want to pay attention to which one you're buying because it couldn't it could not be best suited for your playstyle. But it is pretty clearly marked when you go onto the shipyard screen. Uh, each station has unique, not unique, but it has a variety of different ships available, uh, including pirate ones. One, with, there's even one that's supposed to look like a galleon with like holographic cells, which is pretty cool, uh, but not really suited for my uh, sedentary lifestyle <laughs> in the big black. Anyway, guys, that is Astrox Imperium. As I said, it's eleven pounds thirty-nine. If you've got like a little over a tenner to throw away when you just want to give it a try, I would highly recommend it. Uh, the guy that's doing it, Jace Mas Masula, I'm, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that terribly, because I likely am, uh, seems to be working hard on it and dedicated to it quite a lot. He's also quite communicative from what I've seen. I've never actually spoke to the guy or contacted him or anything like that, but he seems to have conversations on the Steam forums. He seems to regularly update the store page of what he's doing. And... He just seems to be really into the game he's making, which is lovely. And I'm pleased I got the chance to support him by buying it. And I just... I just think this is the sort of game I'd like to see supported. Uh, because it's, it's a genre I love. It's given me an option to play this sort of thing outside of the reach of certain tyrannical companies, shall we say. And he's doing it, like, out of love, man, really. I mean, he's doing it because he wants to do it. He's, you know, he's promised that the £11.39 thing isn't going to change. Even when it goes full access, it will, it will stay the same. You know what? I believe him. Because he's holding up all his other promises, which is really nice. There is also mod tools. Now, I'm too stupid to use them. But he's giving, sort of, the community the chance to, sort of, like, input into the game by making shit for it if they want. Uh, I don't view that as like some sort of mercenary sort of trying to get us to finish his game, but it's nice to be able to input into a game that you like. So if I wasn't stupid, I, I might try and do something with it. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm fairly catastrophically stupid. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think I've warbled on for quite long enough. Uh, take it easy, and I'll catch you next time.